The Supreme Court heard arguments on a case yesterday concerning a 1994 law that restricts people under domestic violence restraining orders from having firearms. The case concerns Zaki Rahimi, a Texas man who in 2019 physically assaulted his then girlfriend and threatened to shoot her if she told anyone. The woman received a restraining order against Rahimi in 2020, which prohibited him from possessing firearms. It also suspended his handgun license. Rahimi was charged under the 1994 federal law and pleaded guilty, but he challenged the constitutionality of his punishment, claiming it violated his rights under the Second Amendment. An appeals court later vacated his conviction, citing the Supreme Court's 2022 ruling, which concluded people have the right to bear arms outside of their homes. Justices yesterday appeared to indicate that they may uphold the 1994 law. Joining us now, the executive director of Moms Demand Action, Angela Farrell Zabala. She was protesting at the Supreme Court yesterday to advocate for keeping the domestic violence firearm law on the books. It's like we're trying to keep our rights and we're trying to keep the laws that protect us. Uh, tell us how you think this is going to go and what more can people do? Well, good morning. I'm so glad to be here this morning. Look, we know that this is so important for women and families across this country. It feels like a no-brainer for many of us, as you're mm -hmm. alluding to. We understand that when an abuser has a gun, that person that's in that domestic violence situation is five times more likely to be shot and killed. And on average, 70 women a month are shot and killed in this country. And so we had people from all across this country had over 200 people and more that were streaming and watching us at the Supreme Court yesterday, really making their voices heard and demanding that the Supreme Court rule in favor of women and families and survivors in this country. So this, we're gonna continue to be loud about this. We feel that we mm -hmm. made our voices heard and we're hoping that the Supreme Court does rule in favor of survivors of domestic violence. Angela, I'm, yeah, I'm curious, Angela, if your organization and the other really powerful organizations that are working on gun safety in this country, if you have considered trying to go the route that is is currently occurring on abortion, um, initiative petitions to specifically go after these military style weapons that are slaughtering innocents all over our country at a pace that is shocking to most Americans. Uh, why haven't there been more efforts to put issues on ballots around the country to do what the vast majority of Americans want when it comes to these weapons of war? You're absolutely right. This is what the vast majority of Americans want. When I travel around this country, it doesn't matter if I'm in a red state, a blue state, Democrat, <clears throat> Republican, and gun owners alike feel like enough is enough, especially when we think about assault weapons uh, and that. So we're going to continue as we focus on keeping families and, and children in particular safe when we think that this is a leading cause of death for kids, teens, and young adults in this country. We're going to continue to look at every single option that we have, every single tool in our toolbox to make sure that we're doing so. so so as we travel around this country, we're looking at those options. We're also looking at things like, for instance, we're talking about the election yesterday that happened across this country. We are running our people for office. We're making sure that we have gun sense champions in office because we know that, that when they get elected, that they're going to put gun sense front of mind and make sure they're protecting communities, not just when we think about policy, but think about even nominating judges. So we're looking at every single thing uh, in our toolbox when it comes to protecting families across this country. Angela, good morning. Second Amendment absolutists, the NRA, say just about every gun is covered always under this Second Amendment. That's a right enshrined in the Constitution. But it sounds like during these oral arguments anyway, the justices have been receptive to the idea that, no, there are moments and places and people where guns should not be present. Is that a fair assessment of at least the early stages of this case? That's a very fair assessment. I think the majority of people realize, and I say this again, 
Republicans, Democrats, gun owners alike, that there has to be reasonable regulation. We have to be able to protect communities like any other industry. This is one, when we think about uh, gun owners, when we think about the gun industry in this country, um, we're thinking about an industry that is fairly, you know, unregulated when we think about being able to hold them accountable. So absolutely, people are sick and tired of this, especially when we think about weapons of war on our streets. They have no place on our streets. And people are raising their voices. Again, as I travel across this country, it is loud and clear over and over again, no matter who I talk to, enough is enough. So we are very hopeful that this is something that the Supreme Court realizes and will actually make sure they're ruling in favor of families and particularly domestic violence survivors in this country. Director of Moms Demand Action, Angela Farrell-Zabala, thank you very much for coming on this morning.